strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today of the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries today, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, master, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins of the heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered my soul, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The Word of the Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and he does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give you praise, the sea and all its living creatures. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man and through sin death, and thus death has spread through the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of lawmaking. Yet, death reigned over all from Adam to Moses, even though their sin, unlike of that, that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking the law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably, considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace coming through the one man Jesus Christ came to so many as an abundant free gift. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, the Word was made flesh and lived among us, and all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. Do not be afraid, for everything is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight, what you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny, and yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing? Why? Every hair in your head has been counted, so there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So, if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. It was during the Mexican War, about a hundred years ago or so, now Henry Thoreau, the philosopher and writer, vehemently opposed the war because he believed it to be an attempt to expand slave-holding territories, and we're hearing a lot about slavery in the news these days. He actually refused to pay taxes because the money was going to the war effort. Because of this, he ended up in jail rather than pay these taxes. Now, Bill Emerson, his friend, another philosopher and writer, and someone who also strongly opposed the war and slavery, visited him in prison. Emerson asked Thoreau, Henry, why are you in prison? Thoreau looked straight in the eye, looked him straight in the eye, and quickly asked him, Bill, why are you not in here? Now, following Jesus can set us on a collision course with people less motivated to live by the gospel message than we might be. We saw last year, for instance, where one politician stepped down as party leader because the party's manifesto on certain pivotal moral issues ran counter to his Christian's beliefs. It takes guts, I think, to do something like that. St. Thomas More, whose feast we actually celebrate tomorrow, he wasn't afraid to confront King Henry over his illicit marriage. 
And of course, Jeremiah, cited in the first reading today, he often preached in words which made his listeners feel very much ill at ease. He's actually known as the But we sometimes are called to step into the shoes of Jeremiah. Christians make noises these days about many things, such as world hunger, global warming, child trafficking, and racial inequality, to name but a few, all major issues, of course, in their own right. But there can be situations much closer to home which test our real mettle. For instance, if we feel that our children and I are being taught about relationship and other personal issues at too tender an age, would we be prepared to kindly tell the people pushing this agenda about our unease, as many have done? And I believe this program is now being rethought. When your older children or grandchildren tell you they're going to move in with their fiancé as a Catholic Christian, would you advise them to think again? And when a person's good name is being dented in conversation, would we intervene? All this, I believe, is standing up for Christ, which the end of today's Gospel calls for. I doubt very much if Jesus could have been the saviour of the world if he had minded his own business and not challenged the religious leaders of his day on a host of issues. At his mock trial, they accused him of being a troublemaker, but that was only with people who shut their ears to the message and they refused to change their ways. They were the ones who put him on the cross. Only a handful stood by him at the foot of the cross, his mother included. The centurion, a complete outsider, he was one of those who stood at the foot of the cross. And he was heard to say, because it is in the Gospel, in truth, he said, this man was a son of God. He could have kept his opinions to himself. Let us remember St. Paul, John Paul II's words to the young people shortly before he died in 2005. This is what he said. Do not be afraid to stand up for Christ and his gospel, especially when it is called for. We could disown him by our thoughts, our words, our deeds, and even by our silence. But, all is not lost. With his grace, if we pluck up the courage and stand by him, he will not disown us in his presence. We have his word for it in today's Gospel. If anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. God bless you all. We make our prayers to the God of our salvation because all our hope rests in Him. Like the prophet Jeremiah, may the universal church never tire of challenging injustice and falsehood of every kind and not be silenced by apathy or indifference. Lord, hear us. May young people and the not so 
young be given courage to stand up for Christ in today's society, especially when the occasion presents itself. Lord, hear us. May people of different races see everyone as their brother and sister, regardless of their history, education, race or social standing. May the whole of humanity become one in Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, especially those battling the coronavirus. May they be restored to health. Lord, hear us. We pray for the dead, especially Brendan Murphy and Annie O'Connor, who died recently, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and during the coming week. May they receive the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. We pray to Mary, who is our model of faithfulness to the Christian calling. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause a while and pray for our needs of our own. The Vocations Prayer Loving and generous Father, it is you who call us by name and ask us to follow you. In particular, you call some to serve you as ministers in your church. Bless our diocese of Hallam by raising up faithful and dedicated priests, deacons, and religious. Bless our families and choose from our homes those who are needed for your mission. Blessed John and Anne. Blessed Robert Ludden. Blessed Nicholas Garland. Blessed William Richardson. Mary, Mother of Perpetual Health. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you win my soul. Since I can't now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you.
Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.